Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the characteristic of a ring. Okay, so in this next video what we're going to discuss is a very important but simple theorem concerning the characteristic of integral domains. Okay, so here we go. Theorem. So we're going to promote our general ring up to being an integral domain. So previously when we were discussing the characteristic of a ring, we were working with an arbitrary ring, capital R. Now we're going to insist that our ring is rather more fancy. Okay, so we're going to insist that our ring is actually an integral domain, which for short, I'll abbreviate down to ID. Now remember, an integral domain is a non-zero commutative ring. Okay, so that means that it's a commutative ring, uh, which is not the zero ring which also obeys the integral domain property. And the integral domain property is that if you take two non-zero elements and multiply them together in this ring, the answer is non-zero. Okay, so you cannot multiply two non-zero elements together and get a zero as your answer. And in fact, in an integral domain, if your ring is an integral domain, then the only way to multiply two elements together and get the answer zero is if one or both of the elements that you've multiplied is equal to zero. So what are we going to show then about integral domains? Well, what I'm going to show is that the characteristic of an integral domain can only be either zero, okay, so the characteristic of a ring can only be zero, or, if it's a natural number, it must be a prime natural number, okay, where I'm, the prime numbers in the natural numbers are, as you learnt in school, the prime numbers that you learnt in school, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, etc. Okay, so these are the only two options then for the characteristic of a ring. It can either be 0, or it can be a prime natural number, but it cannot be a composite natural number which can split down into a, a product of two other natural numbers where neither of those natural numbers uh, is one or negative one, a unit in, oh well, actually since we're working in the natural numbers we can just say one, okay, where neither of those uh, two natural numbers is one. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? Well, the proof is very simple. We're going to do it by proof by contradiction. We're going to assume that the uh, characteristic of our ring is indeed a composite natural number, because that's all we need to prove. We're Effectively, I could rewrite the statement as saying that the characteristic of the ring cannot be a composite natural number. Okay, it can only be uh, zero or a non-composite natural number. Okay, so we're going to prove this by contradiction. We're going to assume the exact opposite of what I want to prove. We're going to assume that the characteristic of this integral domain is a composite natural number, and we're going to prove that actually it's not the characteristic there. Okay, which of course would be a contradiction. So we're going to assume then that the characteristic of our integral domain is equal to some natural number n where n is now a composite natural number. And being a composite natural number means that I can split it into a times b, where both a and b are natural numbers, and I can guarantee that neither of these is equal to 1. Okay, so I can guarantee that a and b are both strictly greater than 1, and I can also say they're strictly less than n. Okay, so that's the meaning of n uh, being a composite natural number, that there exists a and b, which are elements of the natural numbers, such that they're both strictly in between 1 and n, such, so that the two can multiply together in the natural numbers, so this is multiplication in the natural numbers, to give n. Okay, right, now why is this going to uh, allow me to arrive at a contradiction? Well, now let's use the notation that I showed you at the end of the previous video, okay? Uh, what we need to consider is a times b dot 1, okay? Uh, of course, a times b is equal to n, and n being the characteristic of the ring, we can consider this and we know what the answer is. This must be equal to 0, okay? So a times b is equal to n, and if we dot that with 1, of course we're going to get 0, because if you add 1 to itself this number of times, by the definition of this being the characteristic, uh, it's going to give you the answer 0. Now what we can do is use that theorem that we discussed in the previous video uh, to split this down now and say that this is a.1 times in the ring b.1, okay, where this is now multiplication in the ring. 
Now, of course, that's perfectly true, because if we were to work out a dot 1 times b dot 1 by the theorem that I showed you in the previous video, we'd say that this is equal to a times b in the natural numbers dot 1. So we can do that in reverse and take it to this. Okay, now why is this a problem? Well, because we're working in an integral domain, remember r was assumed to be an integral domain, I've got a product of two things in the integral domain, which is giving me 0. That means that one or both of these must equal zero, so at least one of them has to equal zero. That's all I need. Okay, so I can now conclude that, say, that a dot one is equal to zero. Okay, just arbitrarily, let's say it's the a dot one that is equal to zero. But now, here's a problem. I'm saying that I can add one to itself a times, and that will give me zero. a is strictly less than n. Okay, and it's some natural number that's strictly less than n. So now what that shows me uh, is that um, a would be the characteristic of the ring, not n. Okay, so this is a contradiction because it's contradicting n being the characteristic of the integral domain. Okay, because here, quite blatantly, a would be a better candidate for the characteristic of the integral domain. Okay, so this is a contradiction, so we can assume, therefore, that the characteristic of the integral domain could not have been this composite natural number. Okay, so the characteristic of an integral domain can only be either zero or a prime natural number if it is going to be a natural number. Oh, again, that's a very important theorem to know that all integral domains uh, do indeed have a uh, characteristic either zero or a prime if it's some natural number. Okay, and with that we will end this video.